What's going on, everybody? Figured I'd um, do something I haven't done in a while, which is like uh, hobbies, videos, but kind of doing a step by step for my project. So, after finishing a Team Yankee tournament um, last weekend, I kind of been, was burnt out on painting a whole bunch of infantry and BMP. So, I decided why not switch complete gears and go to uh, turn of the century of the 20th century and the end of the 19th century and doing some Anglo Zulu. So, um, most of them have been assembled, but basically, I'm, it is going to be pretty basic, but I'm going to go through step by step. I may have gone through this before, but I like having a mix for my basing material. Um, I've already glued my model to appropriate size bases. Uh, again, depending on what rule set you're going to use, um, the basing is totally up to you. Um, as you can see, my individual models over here are on singles. Um, for playing stuff like black powder, you'd want them to be more together, but there's other rule sets like um, Fire in the Flame, or I think it's Sword and Flame, um, that are all single. So in any case, I've already applied the glue um, on the base of my um, excellent uh, officer carrying the colors, running away on a horse, shooting backwards. Um, and I don't know if you can see, gosh, I'll just zoom in, but there is a Zulu shield on the base right there, so it'll be good to paint. And uh, if you guys don't already know it, the easiest way to do this kind of stuff is you apply the PVA glue or white glue right on the base, dip it in, make sure you get it all in there, boom. And if you get a spot like see in the back here where there's zero big rocks, you can just do something like this. Yes, I'm using super glue. And you just pick out individual rocks and just fire them on there. Because this is going to be an officer base, so it's going to have to look a bit nicer. But, you know, do what you can with what nature gave you, with, you know, how you put it in the, sh you know, in the, in the basing tub. But I'm just putting a little bit of uh, super glue on some of these loose rocks. The ones that stick up tend to come out. And then once that's dry, we'll go ahead and um, these are the ones here I've already done the... Uh, the base colors. Um, I thought I was going to be having a game a couple of months ago, so I um, I did some very very basic colors, like you know the guns are gray, the basing is done, uh, like the ground base, and then uh, you know the, the the gunners are blue and the skin is done, and that's about it. And as you can see, um, I don't have very many Anglo Zulus, but I'm planning on getting another couple of units. Um, but I figured this is a project where instead of just rushing it uh, to get it to tabletop standard, which is usually what I do, I'm going to go I'm going to go to town on these guys and uh, see if I can uh, do it. I probably won't, I'll probably balk and just want to speed paint them through, but I think it'll be nice if I can actually get a good job. So we'll catch on the next step. So here's the three colors I used to do the, um, the pants. It's dark Prussian blue, periscope blue, and then field blue. Now, <clears throat> the field blue, it looks like a gray. Um, if any of you guys used to play uh, uh, Warhammer 40k, it's, it's a lot like Fenris gray where there's some blue in it. Um, and you can see here, it's a little tough to see, but this model here is just the pure um, base coat of uh, Prus dark Prussian blue. And then Bromhead, I've already go ahead, gone ahead and put the periscope blue and the field gray uh, on there. And the reason I went with more of a blue gray is because um, that's how they looked. Um, a lot of people I've seen paint them with a really, really bright blue, but uh, it was more of a blue-gray, as it turns out. So, I mean, <clears throat> if I wasn't doing, you know, 30 models, I could probably keep highlighting this up, but, I mean, for that little amount of blue, that's fine. Um, since I found that that didn't really show off uh, the blue that much, I did. This is another model I have here of Sergeant Reynolds tending to uh, um, a, war, uh, a wounded soldier. Um, and he's mostly blue. So here I've done the periscope blue only. I haven't decided if I'm going to highlight um, this color slightly different. I'm not sure if these guys, like the gunners and the, the support guys, like the surgeon, whether it was different color blue or not. But So this is the dark Prussian blue with the periscope blue, and this is with all three. So you can see there's a bit of a difference. I'm not quite sure which I like better. I'll probably go with what this guy had has here but I just wanted to show you the, you know the three steps which is that so now we go on to the most iconic part of it which is the uh, coats 
and that's going to take a lot of layers of red, but I mean, they're red coats after all, so we do have to spend some time. So we'll see on the flip side of that. All right, real quick, I've put on the Cavalry Brown. I'm trying to focus this in here. Uh, on top of the Burnt Red, so that's uh, Cavalry Brown 982 on top of the base coat of uh, 814 Burnt Red. Um, I think it looks good so far. Let's just rotate this around real quick here. You can see more of the uh, the detail where I'm leaving um, some shadows down where the uh, where the creases are and where the uh, where it's uh, sewn together, so I want to leave those out. Um, it is a little shiny right now. I literally just applied it. Um, it's not supposed to be that shiny. Um, but next is going to be uh, carmine red, and then the bright red of vermilion red, and then maybe edge highlight um, with Vallejo orange red. So we'll see that's gonna, how that's going to turn out. So now I've done the carmine red. Uh, it's starting to look really, really good. Sorry, part of my fingers. I'm going to rotate on my dice here. Again, we're seeing more and more of the uh, the stitching, which is the word I couldn't think of before. Um, there's one more red highlight that I think I'm going to do. Um, I did bring out uh, an orange red on the off chance I want to do extreme highlights. Um, him being an officer, I'll probably give him the extreme highlights. Um, Although maybe not because of all of his piping all being gold rather than the white. So maybe I don't want to have the uh, the orange on there with the, with the gold piping. So we'll see. But so far I'm really liking the, uh, the red coat. Even though um, as a French Napoleonic player usually I want to shoot the red coats. But in this case uh, these are my team. So uh, we'll do the last of uh, the fourth color highlight which is vermilion red. And see how it turns out. All right, and here we are with the vermilion done. Uh, I think it looks good. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, doing the orange. That's bright enough for me. Sorry for the bad lighting, but that's looking pretty sharp. Uh, that's good, so I'll, I guess I'll start doing the um, smaller stuff, like uh, the stocks, the piping, the kit, the boots, and all that. Let's go through uh, what colors I used when uh, when I'm done doing them. So that is the vermilion done though. A little more difficult to see here because I've uh, washed or I've done an ink on the skin tones there, but uh, I've done the black on the uh, puttees and the boots. Um, I've done the black in preparation for the rifle. Um, I've done the regimental colors with a dark and lighter green. Um, <clears throat> I've used desert yellow to do the piping. Normally the piping would be um, white, but uh, as Bromhead is an officer, and looking up at the old pictures of the movie from um, from Zulu, um, so I'm just trying to reach here, turn it around. So everything is prepped to do the uh, the uh, basically just the highlight of the skin tones, the metal work, and the browns. And then we're done. I don't know why it's gone dark all of a sudden. I mean, I'm using the exact same light as before. I don't know what the heck's wrong here. Let's try this. Yeah, it's slightly better. Anyways, he's starting to look good. Um, that's a bit better of a shot there. Um, so I'm in the home stretch now. I'm just going to do a combination of browns on the... Um, on the puttees and to do the stock. Um, I'm going to do the first two highlights are going to be the exact same and then for the leather it's going to be um, uh, do I think about flat brown and then for the wood it's going to be uh, mahogany um, maybe up to beige brown as a highlight just to give it a different bit of a color. But I mean apart from that he's, he's looking pretty good. I'll do some white on the strappings and uh, and uh, highlights on the face and we're good to go. So. I'm liking the look of it so far. Now, I'm not sure how quickly these are going to go, but anyways, that is that. All right, we're all done. Um, here's what he looks like now. Um, I've done his skin uh, with a bit of wash. Uh, soft tone, Army Painter Soft Tone. 
Um, the green was done with a two-stage green, like I mentioned. Um, the black boots are uh, black, then German gray, then neutral gray. The brown puttees are black, then German camo brown, then chocolate brown, and then uh, beige brown. The webbing is light gray, then white, or sky gray, depending on. Um, sorry, there's some more brown in here as well. Uh, the pistol case uh, for him. The <clears throat> stock of the gun, like I mentioned, uh, is the same as this brown, although you split. You can see it down here, actually. I've got the brown set up. So up to here, this is for the leather, right? You just switch this out for um, mahogany brown or any red brown, really. Um, this old wood color from Panzer Aces works as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'll get back to the zoom in view here. Um, for the yellow work, on the piping, he's an officer, so normally the piping would be white. Uh, I just used a uh, desert yellow, same with his hair. Um, oh yeah, and a little pouch here. So the regular men we're gonna have are gonna have more equipment pouches, but that's uh, khaki gray, then khaki, and then ivory to highlight up. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think it looks great. Ready to order some people around, you know. Give them uh, aristocratic little phrases there at the beginning of the of the battle. All right, and now that I've done um, Bromhead, I've done a strip of four dudes, as you can see here, using the methods. Um, I've cleaned up a couple of things. Um, starting to use the off-white instead of the gray uh, for the piping. And uh, I think it turns out a little bit better, um, especially when I keep turning. Uh, you'll see Surgeon Reynolds, uh, the piping on his, uh, the straps on his the backside there uh, look good. But uh, <clears throat> I chose also not to highlight the um, pouches, the final layer of ivory. So that's just khaki gray and khaki. Uh, the blue is the same as before. Um, the red is the same as before. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. The uh, Pith Helmets uh, is two layers of light gray and then finished off with the off-white again. So there's not a single thing of actual white um, on these models, but I mean, I think they turned out really, really sharp. Um, I'm especially pleased with the uh, piping on the um, epaulettes that you can see there. And on the sleeves there, we can see the, the green regimental colors. I think those turned out really well. Um, I tried to kind of do the same thing on these gentlemen right here, the surgeon and uh, and the wounded soldier there. But uh, yeah, I think it turned out well. And uh, job's a good one. And so now I'm uh, pretty stoked to actually do the rest of them. I can probably gun out... Uh, the unit in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not painting all of the time uh, these days. And uh, Black Tree Designs has a sale on some boars. And so uh, I've got a couple um, that came in my, my kit, uh, in my box set. I got a metal one and a couple plastic ones. So I think maybe if I do um, a unit of dismounted boar sharpshooters, um, if you, anybody has seen the movie Zulu Dawn with Peter O'Toole, and um, and uh, Burton, um, Burton plays a uh, he plays a, a boar uh, cavalry captain. Uh, so they play a prominent role. They're basically they're like dragoons. They they rush around, uh, dismount, shoot, and then as the Zulus come towards them, they remount and then uh, and then shove off. So that'll be an interesting unit, I think, to have. So I, I might uh, might take uh, advantage of a thirty percent sale. But anyways. Enough blathering on for me. So that's basically my step-by-step. -step. Uh, I'm happy with it, and uh, hopefully uh, it helped any one of you guys out there uh, thinking doing something similar. All right, cheers. Alrighty, I have now done and finished um, the second stick of infantry and my um, officer on horse. So I'm just gonna slowly rotate this around for the video. But I've got, uh, so on this front row here, so this is uh, Color Sergeant Bourne. 
right here. So I kind of started to see his uh, epic uh, sideburns, but they are there. Um, this guy in the middle here handing out ammunition from his pouch is uh, Chaplain Smith. Um, these guys are just normal dudes. Um, I've got Bromhead that I painted before there. There's uh, Sergeant Reynolds. Sorry, Surgeon Reynolds, and I've painted the stripes on the trousers that are supposed to be white, so I've now painted them white. And then um, this is the stick of infantry that I did last time. And uh, this here is the officer running away with the colors um, that my buddy Scott got me in England. So I've had to paint the, the Union flag there all wrapped up. And there he is, firing back. Um, Protecting the colors. So so far so good. I'm trucking quite along. Quite I'm trucking along quite well with these guys. Um, next up, I think I'm going to do chard, and maybe the two guns. And so a seven pounder, and a Gatling gun. And they're going to be Royal Marines, so it's going to be dark blue uh, from HMS Budicia. So that is that. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, that's it for me uh, for this first couple steps from my uh, Anglo Zulu project.